celebrate him once again with a clap offering. Tell somebody by your left, by your right, that our God is a in God. And sit down majestically. Thank you, choir. God bless you mightily. Psalm 105. I'm using the new King James. Covenant keeping God. Psalm 105 verses 8 to 15. He remembers his covenant forever. The word which he commands on generations. The covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath or promise to Isaac and confirmed it to Jacob for his statute to Israel as an everlasting covenant. To you I will give the land of Canaan as the allotment of your inheritance. When they were few in numbers, indeed very few, and strangers in it. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, permitted no one to do them wrong. Yes, he rebuked kings for their sake, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones, and do my prophet no harm. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Therefore, know that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations. Those who love him and do what? Keep his commandment. He keeps, is a faithful God that keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations. With those who love him and keep his commandments. No matter who you go to for prayers, if they are genuinely of God, that prayer needs mercy and that prayer needs covenant. Hallelujah. What God is a covenant keeper. You cannot live in sin and expect him to answer your prayers. It doesn't work like that. If anybody has told you it works like that, they are using something else. Hallelujah. Because our God is the covenant keeper. So I want to start off by letting you know that God loves you so much. And you need to understand that because of his love, he gave his word. The word of is as a result of his love for you and I. The scripture that we're reading and we read every day is for our own good. It's meant to uplift us, it's meant to encourage us, it's meant to build us, hallelujah, in our most holy faith. As you continue to meditate on the word of God, as you continue to put it in practice, God's word begins to align in your life. God is a covenant keeper. What is a covenant? A covenant is a sacred agreement between God and his A sacred agreement between God and his children. A covenant is God's specific conditions and promises that he has promised us to bless us with every heavenly blessing. But the catch to every condition of covenant is we must obey. Because anytime we are making covenant with God or keeping covenant with God, it qualifies us taker of God's blessings. 
Because whenever we choose not to keep his covenant, we cannot receive any blessings. Hallelujah. The covenant of God guides us when it comes to choices that we make. Hallelujah. So we begin to receive what he tells us. It is this covenant that we want to keep that makes us to resist temptation. Because when you read that Psalm 105, the background to that story is that they were just leaving Babylon. The children of Israel were returning from Babylon when that scripture or when that psalm was penned down. So there's so much to learn about this psalm, especially in difficulties. Especially when you are going through difficult times, you need to... 105 is talking about the eternal faithfulness of the Lord. When challenges come, there are some scriptures that you will read to understand that I'm a child of covenant. Why? He has made that covenant to a thousand generations. I am not afraid of anything. When there's a covenant in place, it is secured. A covenant is different from promises. God can promise to do something and decide not to. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. We'll read that. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 30 quickly. This was the story of um, Eli. He said, Therefore the Lord God of Israel says, I indeed, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father would walk before me. But now the Lord says, Far be it from me. For those who honor me, I will honor. Those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Eli failed to train up his children in the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. And this brought about judgment on, on him. This was a lineage that God, the Levite, they were a lineage that God had chosen. But because of this man, God decided and said no more. Because he promised. But when you look at covenants, God can never violate. Hallelujah. He made a covenant with David. He said, your seed will always sit on the throne. Now, when you read their story, <laughs> after Solomon came Jeroboam, was it Jeroboam now? That Then the kingdom was split. Every in the, They were terrible kings. But God will say, because I have made the covenant with David, I will leave them there. Hallelujah. God is ever true to his covenant from generations to generations. There are things I want you to note today before we pray is our prayer service. The first thing you must understand about this covenant keeping God is that God keeps promises. He can break it. He can change his mind, but he keeps promises. As long as you are in the conditions. Whenever you are struggling in life, whenever you are discouraged in life, always remember what God has promised you. Especially when you are living for him. Second Peter, four, second Peter chapter 1 verse 4. He said, by which we have been given to us an exceeding great and precious promises that through this you may be partakers of divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Challenges come. You are meant to go back and remember what is the promise of God for my life. If you don't have a personal promise from him, search the scripture. You are promised an inheritance like none other, an eternal reward in heaven. This give you hope in life. Hallelujah. Because when you remember the promises of God, for me, it's like an anchor in the storms of life. Don't think I don't get challenged. <laughs> and don't think I don't face problems. Don't think 
difficulties. There are choices I make as a result of the covenant of God. And don't think I'm not tempted. I'm tempted every day like you. Hallelujah. So don't think it doesn't happen to pastor. Pastor doesn't understand. But my understanding has nothing to do with what the word is saying. My understanding is foolishness before God. This is somebody that knows what will happen tomorrow. Me, I don't have an, a clue. If I'm going to have a, a dream, and that dream is because he gave it. So you must begin to understand that God keeps promises. Hebrews 6 verse 19. Hebrews 6, verse 19. This hope we have as an anchor soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil. We have a hope, and that is the promise that he has given. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10, verse 23. Hebrews 10, 23. He said, let us hold fast. Hallelujah of our hope without what wavering for he who promised is faithful when i see people that are in their 50s giving birth in the redeemed christian church of god i know god is, is a covenant keeping god hallelujah number two not only does it keep promise, this covenant keeping God gives protection. We may be outnumbered, we may be minority, but one with God is majority. Hallelujah. One with God is a majority. This world is not our home. There are some things you need to settle in your mind. You see, when you are a son, somebody going on a journey, the things of that place that you are passing through should not hold you down. Many of us, we want to build empires. I'm, there's nothing wrong with, you know, having good life here and all that, enjoy. Um, but that enjoyment, is it in with what God wants for your life? If there's anything that's going to take you out of the will of God, is also what the devil will give you. And the truth is, the devil doesn't give anything good, but he makes it appear as if it's good. It gives protection. Evil is everywhere, but God gives protection. We face many dangers daily, but God gives protection. Christians all over the world are being injured or killed who gives protection. Whether you're a Christian or not, it doesn't stop you from being robbed. But God gives protection. Being attacked, God gives protection. Being taken advantage of, God still gives protection. Always remember that. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 13. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 13. He said, but evil men and impostors will grow and worse, deceiving and being deceived. It is the word of God. It is the word of God. I began to understand that at the beginning of every year, there's always different schemes coming out for people to make money. Observe it. January, new thing. <laughs> and there will be people that will be gullible. Because your mind, they are playing psychology. In your mind, you're already saying, this new year, something must happen. And somebody is telling you, something will happen. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. But God gives protection. For the fact that you lose money or you are defrauded, God still gives protection. Because there's a foolishness part of us that make us do the foolish things that God has not commanded. You must, 
you must trust in his protection. You must be patient to listen to what he has to tell you. Never be in a hurry. This world, God is a covenant keeper. Hallelujah. God is a covenant keeper. I have seen things that God has people in this church that even me, it surprises me. Why? Because he's a covenant keeper. So you must always remember that, that God is a covenant keeper. Don't allow fear. Or fear, I don't have papers. I don't have this. I don't have that. That is irrelevant if God is involved. Amen? God is a covenant keeper. When I was growing, I'm still growing as a child of God, I began to realize that sometimes we plan how God should do things in our head. And if he doesn't do it that way, we are angry with him. But God takes us through a process so that we can trust and rely on him. Number three, the covenant keeping God provides for you. Not only does he keep promises, not only does he give protection, but God provides. Philippians 4, 9, shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Now, we quote this scripture a lot of times. <laughs> but there's a covenant involved. Go back to verse, uh, let's start from verse four, uh, 15. Philippians. Know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. They did something. I'm going somewhere. For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again for my necessity. Verse 17. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Verse 18, indeed, I have all and I abound. I am full, having received from a prophet the things sent from you, a sweet smelling aroma and an acceptable sacrifice, well pleasing to God. Then the man of God decided to do what? Uh, it's a prayer. Go back to that verse 19 now. And my God, you can see where it's but we quote it, uh, my God says, what have you done to God? I'm not, forget about the man of God now. What have you done for God? Before you step out and say, my God shall supply all my needs. This is a covenant promise. Say, my God shall supply all my needs according to the riches and glory by Christ Jesus. There's something I have done for God. He provides. There's a covenant there that makes him to provide. Hallelujah. A man of God, the same passion like us. <laughs> he did the bidding of God. He stood before a wicked king. He didn't mind his life being killed. He said, the God before whom I stand, there will be no rain. Now, that person put his life the hands of God that he cannot see. All he heard is, go and appear to Ahab and tell Ahab this. He said, accept that my word. Guess what? God said, eh, you kept that covenant. I will surprise you. Anywhere you go, bed will feed you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Morning, they bring it. Evening, they bring it. Morning, they bring it without fail. When I say God provides, is a covenant keep. I always tell people, no matter what happens, wherever you find yourself, there will be people that will knock on your door to give you a person with God. I'm telling you. It's not about, the people that have will come and give. Oh, I don't have money to do this. I don't have money to do this business. If God wants you in that thing, 
people that have money will give you the money. But many of us, we, we acknowledge is a problem. The just shall live by what? Faith. What does it mean? Every word that proceeds mount of God is what I live by. Does it make sense? Absolutely not. According to man, it doesn't make sense. According to heaven, they are already working on it. That's why people, some people in the world, they will read scriptures like that. How can birds be coming to feed a man? It doesn't make sense to them. But that's the reality. That's the reality. Provides. Convenient keeping God. Provides. You don't have enough. He can still provide. You need to look back. I was past. This should help you and encourage you to continue to trust him. Because the God of the mountain is also the God of the valley. The God of the plenty is also the God of the famine. With situation or circumstance, I find myself, I abound with God. Lastly, the covenant keeping God has a plan for you. Jeremiah 29 verse 10. Jeremiah 29 verse 10 to 13. See, I'm going to read this scripture and I'm going to read something else so you understand what I mean. See, for thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and good word towards you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and I will do what? Listen to you. Now, okay, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Now, that, that word of the Lord, he said, I have a future and I have a hope. Jeremiah 29, we quote it a lot. <laughs> But you must understand the context. They were in Babylon. They were in slavery. They were in captivity. And this Psalm 105 was, this was written after they left Babylon. So you see that what that Psalm 105 was talking about, that God is a covenant-keeping God, is as a result of what this, he has told them in Jeremiah. And said, oh... So these 70 years that God said we will live, it came to pass according to his word, covenant keeping God. Because for the fact that Psalm is before Jeremiah, don't confuse it. <laughs> Psalm 105 was written after they left Babylon. They called him a covenant keeping God because that word came to pass. Now, let's go somewhere. Go back to Genesis 15, 13 to 16. Genesis 15, 13 to 16. Then, said, then, he, then he said to Abraham, this is God talking to Abraham, know certainly that your descendants will be strange that is not theirs and will serve them and they will afflict them 400 years. And also the nation whom they serve, I will what? Judge. Afterwards, they shall come out with great possessions. As, as for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace, and you shall be buried at a good old age. Verse 16. But in the fourth generation, they shall return. For the iniquity of the Amorite is not yet complete. 
Hallelujah. So God was speaking to Abraham. Isaac wasn't born. Jacob wasn't born. And he was telling him that four generations from now. Now, Isaac, um, Isaac, uh, <laughs> uh, Jacob, Jacob gave birth to how many? Twelve. That's generation number three. They are children. Generation number, those were the people. When they had them in Egypt, he brought them. Covenant. When he was talking to Abraham, Isaac wasn't there. That is why somebody like Abraham can say he counted him f the one that has promised. Because when he said you shall have Isaac, Abraham did not doubt. You are telling me what will happen four generations from now. I'm, and I know I won't be there, but I still trust you. Now, he says something in that verse 16. I want us to pray, but I want to... I'm, I'm in a teaching mode. <laughs> he said, for the iniquity of the Amorite is not yet complete. I'm looking for somebody that will punish the Amorites. But their, their bad behavior, uh, I'm measuring it. When it's full, then I will deal with them. So you can understand why God brought Israel out of Egypt to go and take over the land of the Amorites. Their iniquity was full. Why did he take them to Egypt? Why did he make them go through slavery? Uh, God is infinite. Is wisdom. You can't compare it. He knows that they cannot fight the Amorites with 12 people. He needed to take them to Egypt. And in Egypt, they were growing. They were expanding. To the point that Egypt said, ah, the Egyptian uh, Pharaoh said, if these people, the way they are growing, hey, they will take over also. But not knowing that they were not meant to take over Egypt. If he will not panic. When they said they want to leave, Pharaoh said, yes, you need to go because there's an assignment for you to go and destroy the Amorites, the Amalekites. Why? Because God has made a covenant with Abraham. Hallelujah. They are to grow. That thing, that challenge you are going through is for you to be strengthened for where you are going. If you Dodge it, you won't get there. Joseph understood. He said, ah, I came for this assignment. I must preserve Israel in famine. Israel must not die. <laughs> There's an assignment. That's why he told them, when you live here, take my bones. Why? There's a promised land. <laughs> but my bones must be there. Hallelujah. God, covenant keeping up, he has a plan for you. Don't panic. Don't panic. They needed the numbers to be able to fight. <laughs> Oh, you need to understand this. God had to make them grow so much in slavery, not in plenty. Your strength is not developed in pleasure. You must be going through things for you to develop your spiritual muscles. If there's no challenge, everything is going on, Kidori. Guess what? You are nobody before Satan. But a man that has, been, that, has been, that has been produced, fashioned, molded in the secret place of, of, of suffering, when he comes out, money cannot buy him. So when God is fashioning your life, in that pain, 
that when you stand before kings, no amount of money they give you can make you say no. That's the God we're talking about. A covenant-keeping God. He has a plan. When you don't understand that, if somebody comes to you and says, ah, there's somebody there, once they pray, what will happen? God wants to save them, but also to strengthen them. God was teaching them submission under taskmasters. By the grace of God, I've learned a lot to different pastors that I've been under. Do I all like them? No. When I say, I'm not saying hey to. Do I, do I like what and no. But something will keep telling me, stay. Learn. <laughs> uh, I didn't know I was going to be a pastor. All I knew is I'm in love with God. I want to serve God. I want to do God's will. All you without, there was no mobile phone. They will send somebody to my house. Pack your things. We're traveling. Not my father. Not my mother, we met in church. I don't know him from Adam. I say, eh, when? And I'll just tell my people, we're going now. What about work? You know our work now in Nigeria. <laughs> I was working in my father's company, so technically my company. So I park and just tell them we're on a mission field. Hallelujah. Do I like everything? No. We'll go and do uh, outreaches in villages that there's no electricity. I will sleep on wooden benches. In everything, sometimes three, four days, you go and take your bath in the river. We are taking a bath in one particular river before. I won't mention the place. They now told us that the fishes in that river speak to the people of the land. They say, eh? Why didn't you tell us this? <laughs> Hallelujah. But guess what? We went back there. Eh? There are fishes talking to people in this place. And we came to do revival. We started you know, we went into the water. You know, wisdom now. We're not. <laughs> this one, this one. Now, three of us were sick, including myself. But God brought us out. We, when we were there, when we did that exercise, we were telling the people of the children and they go back to that river. Is any fish that comes out to talk to you, come and tell us. We were sure that we were following the covenant keeping God. He has a plan. Strength. So they, God has a plan. They were, they were going. Let me stop here because I want us to pray. Numbers 23 verse 19. Said God is not a man that he should lie, that he should repent. As he said, and will he not do it? Or as he spoken, and will he not make it good? So you can see that some of these things in Numbers, they were out of his, um, Egypt. When they were making, uh, come and cause them, Balaam. Come and do this, Balak, all those things. They were just, uh, God is not a man, like, man that you like. This journey we're on, there's a covenant back in us. And until we'll accomplish it, that's why the so called prophet could not curse them. God said, when you go there, you have to do what? Bless them. So even if he has a mind of cursing them, when he opens his mouth, his blessing that will come out. Either he does that, 
instantly. He chooses one. Hallelujah. God cannot lie. When he says it, he means it. And it will happen. Matthew 6, 25 to 26. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat or what you will drink. No, about your body, what you will put on is more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the hair, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into bands, yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Why are you worried? Isaiah 33 verse 20 to 22. Thus says the Lord, if you can break my covenant with the day and my covenant with the night, so that there will be not, there will be not, there will, there will not be day and night in their season. If you can do that, then my covenant may also be broken with David, my servant, so that he shall not have a son to reign on his throne with the Levites, the priest, and my As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, nor the sound of the sea measured, so will I multiply the descendants of David, my servant, and the Levites who minister to me. Hallelujah. Why? When God made that covenant with David, he had somebody in mind. Jesus Christ. That will sit on the throne forever. So whether he was a wicked king, a polygamous king, a whatever king, as long as in the lineage of David, until Christ, he will permit it. It's a result of covenant. Stand to your face. Begin to appreciate God. Begin to appreciate him. Mazala bradeke seto hinda. Mare de kunto shete baranda kata hendele kotombaya. Rakoto se kete lebre de ke shekete hinda la kataya. Me zumbre de ke seto hinda la parada ke soto hinda. Rako shata yaka parade ke sete hindo loko pashantaya. In Jesus' name we pray. We're gonna ask God for mercy. David's case, there were so many wicked throne so that Christ can appear. But the moment Christ appeared, a new covenant he established. The days of ignorance has passed. Now, God will not accept sinful person and say, because of my covenant, I will permit you. It doesn't work like that. Hallelujah. So we're going to first of all ask God for mercy. In any way, that we have sinned against him in any way that we have not done his will, that God should have mercy. Let's go ahead and begin to pray. Father, be merciful. Be merciful. Be merciful. And if you are here that you've not Jesus or you want to rededicate your life, this is an awesome time to do that because the following prayers we're going to be praying now, you must be in right standing with your father. Thank you for Messi, 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 Maza Brande Keshe Kete Hindo Rondo Boko Sekete Hindo, Maranda Baka Santo Hinta Lige de Gede. In Jesus' name we pray. First Peter chapter 5, verse 10. In the Amplified, please. First Peter chapter 5. We'll take our first prayer from there. It said, After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who imparts his blessing and favor, who called you to his own eternal glory in Christ, will himself complete 
strengthen and establish you, making you what you ought to be. So you're going to pray and say, Father, activate upon my life today the covenant of your blessings, the covenant of your favor over my life. Let it be established in my life making me what i ought to be i pray in the name of jesus let the covenant of blessings the covenant of favor be activated over my life today in the name of jesus because you are the one that has called me me Baranda Shata Yagade Raketoze Brande Zosa Payande Marande Bokoshete Branda Casa Coto Libro do Cosotoye Rande Keto Zuzi Bata Lagada Bala Brada Casato Imara de Bokoshekete Yege de Volovre de Cosocoto Marande Boshata Yagada Bala Brade Kesekete Yege de Marada Bashata Barada Baka Soto Libro do Cosoto Remo shata bara de boko soko to libre de kesete ye mara de moshete ye ge de borodo boko soko to libre de kosoto ete shete ye ge de zuzi palaga da ya ga de lege de ramba shata bala brada kasato libre de keseto me libre de kosoto libre de kosoko to libre de kosoko to ye de rande shata balande ye ge de 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 in Jesus name. You are going to pray that prayer in a different way and say, Father, activate your covenant of goodness in my life today. Activate your covenant of fruitfulness in my life today. Activate your covenant of goodness and fruitfulness in my life today. In the name of Jesus. Father, my God, let the covenant of your goodness, your covenant of your fruitfulness, let it be activated in my life today. Mazo prada jata la gati prada zoto riko toso prado ko shanta yanda marande boko soto rakete seto le brade ko tosoto jembrendo ko tombre de ke tesoto reketo zu parada ka shanta yagada rakato soto belege de belege de gede marande boko shekete yege de bolo brade ko sokoto yege Rada bako soto le brede ke sekete ye ge de 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 reke to soto le brodo ko shekete ye ndo. In Jesus name we pray. You are going to pray that God will activate the covenant of beauty in your life. God will decorate your life. Full destiny begin to manifest. Go ahead and begin to pray. Father, activate your covenant of beauty over my life. Makanta soto legede. Decorate my life. Decorate my destiny. Let it begin to shine. Let it begin to shine. So tele balakutaya, lepra do son to lege de boshkaya, rayen de rundi suti paradi mekita, maka brando so to lebra de kesekete, lebro do kosoko to lebre de kesekete, rabba shataya gadaba lebre de kosoko. Alegede Rabba kata sata la brada kaso to le brede keset Rabba shata ya gada bala brada kasa ta legede belede In Jesus name we pray You are going to pray and say Father Every lot in my life the moment of God's greatness in my life let them depart by fire anything that represents the Lord in my life delaying the fulfillment of God's covenant of greatness let them depart by fire let them depart by fire I want you to pray let them depart by fire in the name of Jesus Lebrada Rakoto Sekete Lebrando Kosotoye Jebara Dakata Yege de Bede Rakoto Soto Lebre de Kos Raboko Shete Yege de 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 Father Lakoto Sotoye Every lot Everything that represents lot Delaying the covenant Oh of greatness in my life from being activated Jade Soto Bale Kete Yege de 
separation before Lord and Abraham. God, let there be a separation now. Makando sota lege de baleda. Let there be a separation now. Likuta lege libra do kosonto. Every hour of greatness that God has ordained for me. Masonto palege de bele. Let them be activated now. Me kumpara de boko shekete yege de. In Jesus' name, we pray. Many of you, I think you are comfortable. <laughs> we are going to pray. The covenant of poverty operating in my life, let it be destroyed by the blood of Jesus. The covenant of poverty operating in my life. An end has come today. Mason to Liga Dusaya. Leko Pata Lege Dede. Leko Palada Yad. The blood of Jesus, let them be destroyed. Maradoboko to legede belegede, let them be destroyed. Mashanta yagada, marane bokumpa lagada bale, rako pata yagada balagada, rabashata yagada. Reketo soto lebra de kesete, rabo shata yagada balagada, mara de boko shekete yegede, let them be destroyed by the blood of Jesus. Me santa yagada balegede balende, rako to shete legede balagada, mara da in Jesus name we pray you are going to pray and say father the covenant of failure the covenant of demotion operating in my life let them be destroyed by the blood of Jesus go ahead and begin to pray every covenant of failure Talagada, every covenant of demotion. Rakota do se telegede, Rambo se telegede balandaya, Marade bodo balegede gede gede. <laughs> Rabo shata, Makatayada, Marando boko sh. De balanda, mara de boko soto legede, rando soto lebre de kese kete yegede, rabo shete balakata yada, mara de boko to soto lebre de kosoto, jebele kete legede balegede, mara nda bata laga. De de de, jabara de ke se ke te ye ge de bolo koto ye de, mara de boko soko to lo bre de ke se ke te ye ge de bolonde, mara de boko soko to le bro do ko soko to, re ke to soto le bre de ke se te ye ge de bolo, mara de bosha. Le bre de ke se te ye, mara de boko soto le ge de bolondo. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. I want to encourage those of you that have just relocated to this country. Anytime you come to a country like this, because close indeed with milk and honey, the enemy will try everything possible to frustrate you. I've been there. Name the job that I did not do. I've been there. Cleaning shops. Washing dishes. There are days I will cry and say, ah, it wasn't this bad now. Where I'm coming from. Hallelujah. And God will say, no, this is where you are meant to be. It's a matter of time. Hallelujah. So I, don't, I want to encourage you never to be discouraged. It's a matter of time. If you hold on to God, you will see his wonders in your life. I'm telling you. He will surely take you to where he wants to take you to. But you must be faithful. Because the truth is, if he brings you here, and within one or two months, everything is just working for you, you will forget him. Uh, you will forget him. Hallelujah. So you're going to pray once again. Every covenant of my lineage making my life miserable. I reject it now in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin.
every evil covenant of my lineage making life miserable for me in this land i reject it in the name of jesus by the blood of jesus i renounce every covenant in the name of jesus le moko to soko to lege de bodo marabakato soto yege de bolo marade mo chete baranda bakatonde marada bakashete yege de balonde oto soto lebre de ko soto lege de de marando bo chete barande kete yege de azo parado soto lege de rande chata barande kete yege de zozu sapa parade ne 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 rambe kupe barande kete gelengo lu branda kataya zetu tala gada bala bala barada bakasata enkerendu kutonde lege do ke parada bakatayande le parade shataya makanto prede sete lege de bolokoto oh shall it be in jesus name we pray lastly job chapter 8 verse 21 can you use the same amplified it will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with joyful shouting the condition is if you are found blameless go to him and just make a covenant of faithfulness with him father i come to you today before your congregation to make a covenant of faithfulness faithfulness in offering faithfulness in tithing faithfulness in giving faithfulness in my time faithfulness in service faithfulness to you faithfulness to your kingdom faithfulness to your work in the name of the lord jesus christ faithful days of my entire life faithfulness oh god in jesus wonderful name we pray everlasting god we say thank you king of glory we bless and worship your name you for what you have done today thank you because there will be mighty testimonies in the name of the lord jesus christ there's a woman here god wants me to tell you there's a garment of shame garment of reproach that's been removed thank you lord we bless you because we know each and every one of us will partake of it in the name of jesus christ